Hi guys, many of you have asked to see or hear a shorter version of my story and I appreciate that because a lot of my interviews are a half hour or even up to two hours long and obviously you want a, a, a summary because that would be more useful. Um, so I realised what I could do is actually read to you from my leaflet and this has been in circulation around the world really um, for, for some years now and people you know, they, they give it to friends, they hand out in the street, they, they, they just uh, distribute it freely. So, and it'll give you an idea what the leaflet's like, so that if you do want um, to, to get some, you can contact me, and of course you can print them off yourself. So, the leaflet is called What Spiritualism Means to Me. Supernatural phenomena interested me since childhood. I loved reading ghost stories and watching ghost hunting TV shows. A few psychic experiences as a child added to the intrigue I felt. My mother's uncle led a spiritualist church and he was also high up in, in Freemasonry and his beliefs were that Lucifer is God. My mother had also experienced psychic events since her childhood but she didn't pursue it seriously until later. When I was in secondary school she felt ready to explore further. Once when walking her dogs in the park a local medium approached saying that he saw her potential and invited her to join a spiritualist church in Glasgow, Scotland and I joined soon after. We both got really engrossed and our belief system basically was that Lucifer is God and that he is at the top of all the supernatural phenomena that occurs in the world and he is at the top of basically he, he oversees all spirit entities that exist. My mum became totally engrossed very quickly attending Sunday services, midweek psychic development groups, yoga classes and so on she shared what she learned, so I also became fascinated. Mediums encouraged this, inviting her to join their open circle, learn to meditate, to channel spirits of the so-called deceased. My mum was keen to develop her abilities of clairvoyance, clairaudience and clairsentience and to learn from the other mediums. Each time mum had life readings from mediums, she'd buy recordings and would listen later. It amazed me that a 30 minute session contained so much explicit communication from alleged spirits. Very specific details were relayed about our lives. Precise names, places and dates were given, proving the mediums weren't charlatans or falling upon names etc by sheer chance. They accurately described the physical appearance, personalities and even repeated common phrases of our apparent dead relatives as they conversed with spirit entities. We devoured mystical books on chakras, crystal healing, reincarnation, alternative therapies, etc. We attended New Age centres and psychic fairs, absorbing as much as we could for our so-called spiritual enlightenment. With our passion for environmental and conservation concerns, social justice and international peace, we gladly participated in healing people and animals by contact or distant psychic healing. We also attended transfiguration sessions touching ectoplasm. My mother began automatic writing. Mediums predicted that I would become a psychic artist drawing portraits of dead relatives and spirit guides, light beings, ascended masters for my clients. I briefly explored Kirlian photography using infrared film. However, over the next 10 or so years, we'd often hear of mediums who could no longer control when spirits spoke to or through them. Some had nervous breakdowns, were admitted to psychiatric wards or attacked people claiming that their, their spirit guides or their ascended masters had forced them to do so. 
We heard reports of poltergeist activity in some mediums' homes. Initially, we accepted explanations that mischievous or obnoxious spirits can sometimes come through. This was a potential hazard of the job. But when it happened to us, it became intolerable and impossible to function properly. Our loving and very good-hearted friends, the other psychics and mediums, kindly tried their very best, but failed to cleanse our home. Spirits spoke to my mum constantly, giving her no rest. They deprived her of sleep. They actually attacked her physically. They chapped loudly from within wardrobes. They slammed doors and so on. Once spirits forced her into trance, against her will, when she was frying food. When she came out of trance, the kitchen was consumed by fire. I arrived just after the fire brigade had extinguished it, just before it spread to all the other rooms. One day, but we realised my mother and our pets could have been killed in that incident. One day, our aunt, who'd also visited spiritless churches and meetings, she felt invisible hands grab her and throw her downstairs, breaking her wrist. Another day whilst out shopping, I watched in abject horror as my mother was lifted and catapulted from the ground, landing on the bonnet of a passing car. We decided to withdraw from spiritualist activities, so we kindly asked our spirit guides to leave. To our shock, they laughed and insulted us. They physically attacked us. This was perplexing as they provided guidance and kindness for years. Clearly, they'd actually deceived us, pretending to be kind and benign, when in reality, they were wicked all along. It surprised us that all the psychics and spiritualist mediums and light workers and gurus we knew and loved very much, had clearly been deceived too, because they had also assumed that our spirit friends and, and spirit guides were truly genuine. However, the biggest shock came when even the spirits who'd always claimed to be our so-called dead relatives turned against us too. They also mocked and hit us. All those spirits warned we couldn't leave the occult as they'd taken control from the day we'd invited them into our lives. My mum and I felt there was, you know, there was something dangerous and deceptive, therefore, in spiritualist activities and in contacting spirit entities of whatever forum. Especially if even the mediums who had brought our fake spirit friends and dead relatives to us had not discerned their true spiritual identity. A Christian I met in a university psychology class invited me to her Pentecostal church, explaining she'd heard other mediums who'd had experienced similar horrors left spiritualist activities to accept the biblical Jesus as their saviour. And I emphasise here, I'm not talking about the cosmic New Age Christ or Christ consciousness. I mean the actual Jesus Christ of Nazareth, of the Bible. So I actually had, it's a long story about that night, which is quite a fascinating night, but I actually had a revelation that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was real. So I received him a couple of days later into my life. I accepted him as my personal Lord and Saviour, thus becoming a, a Bible-believing Christian. My mother's mental health had been, uh, leading, leading up to this, had been clearly deteriorating, you know, because these spirit guys were threatening to, to control her, to kill people. She was not sleeping. They were taking control of her all the time. And, and sadly, that Pentecostal church I just joined as a baby Christian, they had no experience yet of the deliverance ministry 
or exorcism. My mother, um, she went to the doctor, she asked for sleeping pills, naturally, because what she was experiencing, and the doctor said, that, you know, there's no such thing as spirits. Um, if you're being thrown about your house and all these things happening to you, you know, and you think you're hearing voices, I, I'm diagnosing you as schizophrenic and I'm admitting you to the psychiatric ward. So that's exactly what happened. Now, again, that is not unique for, for people who um, contact spirits of any type that, that this can happen to them. If you're a medium or a light worker yourself, I'm sure you will have heard of many um, accounts of this before. And although various explanations can be given, um, please hear me out till, till we get through this, this story. Because this maybe is a, a version of of um, events that you haven't heard before and, and I really hope you consider what I'm actually saying today. So my mother was indeed detained in a psychiatric hospital and after months of, of heavy um, sedation the, the psychiatrist eventually discharged her. But again, so she went back home but remember that, that Christian church I just joined, they had no experience yet of exorcism. Um, I don't even think they really believed in it. Um, so, of course, my mother um, went, returned to, the, to her home where it was still heavily demonised. And this had been going on for years, as you, as you can appreciate. Basically, she was at the end. And to my utter shock and dismay, she committed suicide. Which is extremely tragic. But can I emphasise again, people... Um, the last 20 years have contacted me to say they've been through similar experiences through supernatural um, realms and have attempted suicide or their friends have actually attempted suicide. So my story is not unique at all. Um, it's actually quite common and yet it is not often the type of story you will hear in mainstream media at all. So you could say I'm a spiritual whistleblower here. Um, so soon after that I looked for another church because I realised I needed exorcism performed on me because there were still things happening in my home. And yes, I, I found um, a new church and the pastor came to my home and also my mum's home. And you know, the first time they prayed at the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all the spirits left and never returned. Praise God. Is that not interesting? You know, our, our beloved mediums and, and kind psychic friends had tried for years and could not cleanse the home. But the name of Jesus Christ once cleansed my home and my mother's home. So I was then able to sell my mother's home without worrying in case the new tenants would end up being harassed. So basically you might say, well what's a Pentecostal church and am I pushing such a denomination? No, there's flaws there like there is in every denomination. I'm not pushing it, it just so happens that's where God led me to. Um, well, you can look at in the book of Acts, you can look in the book of Corinthians and you can see what a Pentecostal church should look like because not all of them do. Um, basically as the Bible shows you those who, who gather are trained by the Holy Spirit to prophesy, bodies are healed, other miracles, signs and wonders occur, demons are cast out, um, which some people call exorcism. So, you know, in reality, in just a few years of me being in, in such Pentecostal meetings, I've saw far more many people healed of physical, emotional conditions than I ever saw in all of my years as a spiritualist. I'm not saying they don't heal people, they do, but I would say please question the source of that of that healing. Um, I know ex-traditional Satanists who could heal people wonderfully well, but the power of course came from the dark side, came from Satan, not from God. So, so to backtrack a little bit, you know, even Obviously, I um, had a Bible that I started to read, but even before I came across biblical warnings of the occult, 
I realised the truth. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 8 is a really good chapter because it, it does outline things that, that God asks you to stay away from, not because he's a killjoy, but simply because he knows the, the evil and the demonic behind it all and he does not want you to be exposed to that. So Deuteronomy chapter 18 mentions things like, like witchcraft, like sacrificing your children in the fire, which as we know some occultists do that. Um, it mentions spiritualism, divin divination, necromancy. So, you know, it became clear that all of those spirits that we had contacted had actually deceived us and could impersonate our loved ones. Now, this made sense because, because you might be saying, well, where, where were the, your true dead relatives then? Where were they uh, if all these imposters were showing up? Well, the, the Bible does actually show it's impossible for dead people to return and talk to us because they either remain in heaven or hell for eternity. Now, I know that's a great shock for some people, um, but I'll, I'll continue on. Um, the Bible also describes that, that spirits that um, you know appear at seances or through Ouija boards or through any kind of spirit communication, whether it's an alien, a fairy, a light being, whatever it's claiming to be, these spirits are actually very, very clever. They are the evil fallen angels and they've existed since before creation. They have vast psychic knowledge of, of our families and historical figures down the generations because obviously they follow generations um, successively and they gather information. You know, they're, they're, they're like computers almost. Um, they're like shapeshifters. You might see in the movies, they can easily disguise the, their evil form. They can convincingly pose as dead family or even famous celebrities. And 2 Corinthians 11.14 emphasises this. And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as if an angel of light. It's not surprising then if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. So you may be talking to an angel that seems pure and holy and a servant of righteousness, but I would ask you to test it test any spirits that appear to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and you will see their true identity. Ask them to reveal it to you and I will guarantee you the mask will fall off and you will see what lies beneath. So really what am I saying? Yes I'm saying spirits that work via spiritualism or ghost hunting activities or light work. They're evil demons. They serve Satan to deceive precious mediums and others, appearing as the dead, spirit guides, ascended masters, Reiki healing guides, goddesses, aliens, fairies, whatever. In the last 20 years I've heard countless accounts from people worldwide who have told me each of those entities I've just listed were in fact demons when they confronted them in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible lovingly warns in 1 John 4, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus Christ is the spirit of the Antichrist. I've known many who have challenged the, these spirits, and indeed they, they will get angry, they will scream at the name of Jesus Christ, that they can become violent. And, and you know, and that really says it all, does it not? So, but when I was a spiritualist, I had regarded Jesus as a cosmic force or part of the universal consciousness or a healing medium. Since my conversion in 1994, I've met and read of many ex-psychics, ex-light workers, ex-mediums, ghost hunters, pagans, witches, luciferians, ex-satanists, ex-cabalists. <laughs> And they all discovered that their spirit guides and dead relatives were not who they claimed to be. These people were also set free from demonic attack after inviting Christ into their lives and receiving his overwhelming love and deliverance exorcism. So what happened to me? Well, 
Jesus healed me of, of physical conditions. I was healed of fibromyalgia, which is very debilitating. Um, he has also brought a, a joy and a peace into my life that I never knew existed. And as you get to know him more and more, more of his qualities and his characteristics, um, he pours into your life. His very tangible presence of pure love is far more powerful and real than any dramatic encounter I experienced within spiritualism, New Age or mystical practices. If you think you're having amazing blissful experiences doing what you're doing, well, boy, you ain't seen nothing yet. You know, a friend of mine has said, you've, you've tried the rest, now try the very best. So since my conversion in 1994, have demons turned up and pretended to be dead relatives to me? Again, or spirit guides? No, they never have. Not once. Is that not a key truth in itself? They know fine well that I'm not going to believe that anymore. So they don't even try. Yes, I do see demons now. I cast demons out of people. Um, you know, that, that is a gift listed in the Bible that, that you can do if you believe and have faith and ask for that gift and the Lord grants it to you. Um, so I'm not saying I never have any supernatural experiences, but there's a difference now. So since 2008, I've been very honoured to share my, my story at conferences and events around the UK and on satellite TV and radio um, broadcast around the world. I still continue to hear of more people worldwide who have turned away from spiritualism, meditation, tarot, reiki, yoga, pilates, reflexology and a whole host of new age spirit empowered practices because they are spirit empowered. Some relevant verses if you want to check out 1 Timothy 4 verse 1, Hosea 4 verse 6, Mark 13 21 to 22 Romans 2 verse 4 and 1 Peter 3 15. I'd also like to um, recommend some books to you. Now some of these you can get, you know, second hand on Amazon. Um, they're not expensive or, or you can get together with a group, group of friends and, and, and um, get them together if you can't afford it on your own. Um, for example, good friends of mine, the former Wiccans and Witches. Christine McGuire, who's been in TV, she wrote Escaping the Cauldron. Um, S.A. Tower, she wrote From the Craft to Christ. There's a book by a former Freemason, Diary of a Freemason, Freed Mason, by W.M. Vaughan. I think that's how you pronounce that. And some really good books. Now, some of these are actually really old books, but they are wonderful and I really recommend them. Um, ex New Ager and ex spiritualist medium Randall N. Bayer, Inside the New Age Nightmare, and a rather old book by Victor Ernest, I Talked with Spirits, ex medium, The Beautiful Side of Evil by Johanna Michelson, and an excellent one by Raphael Gasson, The Challenge Encounter Feet Can We Talk to the Dead? So, nearly at the end of this leaflet, it's, it's a long leaflet, isn't it? <laughs> you know, if you would like to contact me or, or, or get more information about my story, you can look at my blog, and that is a spiritualquest.tk. My own book, A Spiritual Quest, will be released in a month or so on Amazon. On my blog you'll see TV interviews, radio interviews of myself and many others like me and you can also check out my YouTube channel Laura Maxwell X Spiritist. My Facebook page A Spiritual Quest and my chapter is in a book by Jeff Harshbarger X Satanist titled Dancing with the Devil. It contains chapters by myself and many other ex New Agers, Ex Occultists, published by Charisma House, 2012. There's a chapter by Son of Sam, the famous killer from the 70s, 80s. And lastly, I host a radio programme called The Supernatural on Eternal Radio. 
and that's where I interview many others who have been through similar experiences like myself. Some of them have been on TV, radio, some of them are authors and really some fascinating stuff again that you may not have heard before so you are seeking truth obviously um, you are seeking the, the answers to, to, to life, spirituality, all of that and I believe that you're open minded and have probably looked at lots of various spiritual avenues so please look at this one, please don't disregard this one if you would like um, prayer or exorcism please contact my friend Pastor Michael Cummings, he has a show on Revelation TV, he teaches about the occult and you'll find his details on my blog. So, just to reiterate, my blog is a spiritualquest.tk Phew, <laughs> all in one breath. So, thanks so much guys for, for, for watching this and um, just really please, please think about what I've shared today and check out my blog if you want and um, thank you and God bless you.